Hi, Busy Bees. So I told you this week you were gonna get two videos. One will be your science experiment that you can do with water dealing with our letter W. This video is describing an Earth Day art project that you can do if you would like in as a way to show that you and we appreciate the Earth and the world that God has given us. So Wednesday, this Wednesday is Earth Day. And to me, what that day is about is doing just that. Part of it is part of it is remembering things we can do to take care of our earth, like recycling things that can be recycled instead of just throwing them in the trash. That way they get reused instead of making new materials every time. But one way I thought that we could show that we love the world we live in and are very appreciative of it and thankful for it is by making an Earth Day art project using some of the things that we find maybe on a walk or a hike or when you're out playing in your backyard. The way I um, came up with this idea is by seeing some artwork and some sculptures that an artist did. And this artist is actually Mr. Burkett's sister. Um, her name is Miss Carissa. And what she does is one of her jobs is she is an artist. She primarily makes sculptures and she usually uses things that she finds around her that she thinks are fun or interesting or colorful and then she'll use a whole bunch of them to make what usually end up being very very big sculptures and so what she's using right now is a natural material that she found when she was out walking or hiking and she collected up a whole bunch of these things and is making these really cool sculptures that i thought that i love and i thought you guys might enjoy seeing them too and so in a minute she's going to show us um, she's going to show how she makes the sculptures, why she thought of it, um, and then show us some of her finished products. And then at the end, when she's finished, I'll come back and I'll explain how we can use what we see from her to make our own Earth Day art project. Hello, my name is Carissa Burkett and I am Mrs. Burkett's sister-in-law. I live in Portland, Oregon, and I am an artist and um, a curator. And she asked me to share with you a little bit about um, a couple of projects I'm working on as it pertains to Earth Day. So one of my favorite things um, to work with is natural materials. And um, today I'm gonna to share with you the work I'm doing with acorn caps. I'm sure all of you have seen acorn caps um, sitting under trees. Sometimes they have the acorns actually in them. Um, sometimes the squirrels get them though before we can get them. Um, there's all different shapes and sizes. You can see this one's a little tiny one. And there's a bigger one. Um, and these are the two different sizes I have right now. These ones are from a black oak, which primarily grows in California. Um, and a little bit in, in southern Oregon as well. And this is from a white oak. And those grow here in Oregon. Um, there are a couple other varieties and they all have different, a little bit different caps, different sizes, bigger and smaller. Um, but regardless, I get to do the same thing with them. You might be able to see over my shoulder here, um, this project that I started. So those are acorn caps all glued together. And then there's a big one um, of the larger caps, the black oaks. Um, so one reason I got started using natural materials um, was I was really inspired by an artist named Andy Goldsworthy. Um, and here are some images of his work. Um, he uses all natural materials. Um, he, he, and he makes all of his work outside. So he's always outside in the elements and he doesn't use anything but natural materials. So when you see these pictures, he goes around and he collects all of the beautiful colored leaves and then he arranges them carefully. Or he collects snowballs and icicles and he arranges them in these beautiful patterns outside, out in the, um, out in the elements. Um, he arranges sticks and stones and um, just makes these beautiful things and I was really inspired by his work. And so um, I went out on a hike and decided to just start collecting materials that I found interesting. Um, I did collect sticks and rocks and, um, and other things and pine needles, um, but something I collected a bunch of that really stuck with me were these acorn caps. Um, they're really fun to hunt and I have invited friends to help me go and collect acorn caps. Um, I also have ordered acorn caps online 
I bought these online. Um, sometimes it's faster just to buy them uh, from someone else who, who hunts them out for you. Um, so the way that I get started on these giant projects is I take one, one little acorn cap at a time and glue it to the next one. Um, and my only, my only tool is my hot glue gun and you can see how well used this is. It's pretty gross. Um, but hours and hours of gluing acorn caps um, have <laughs> gathered up all this, this glue and, and dirt. So I start with just a little dab of glue and then I hold them and I wait for it to dry. So a lot of times I listen to books on tape or I watch TV while I do this so I have something to keep me busy while my hands are busy. But I slowly glue one acorn cap at a time. And as, as an artist, I get to make choices. Artists always get to make the choices, whether it's the colors that they use to paint or the tools they use to use, they choose to use. Um, I'm making a choice of how I want these to set. So you can see I've kind of given them a little bit of an angle. And if I keep doing that, that's how I create the curves, as you see here. Um, and I kind of make a decision as I start whether I want it to curve and have a deep, a deep curve or a smaller curve. And then I just slowly um, shape them like that until over time um, it grows and I have larger, larger structures. So here's a little time-lapse video that shows me a little bit faster gluing little acorn caps together. Um, and one thing to note that when I make these, I typically will stop at a size about this big. Um, once I get a, I get much bigger than this, they start to they start to get kind of brittle, and they will fall apart. What, what do you think? Does this one look like a hat? It's a pretty good hat. <laughs> so I make all these shapes, um, and I um, you can look at the pictures there of some of the different shapes. And then I'll usually take them to the, the art gallery or the space where they're going to live and then I'll glue them together. I'll sit and slowly connect them all and fill in all the blank spaces. And you can see as I've started to do that with the little ones right behind me here. So I had three smaller pieces. You can see this one, this one, and this one. And I'm slowly making them come together. And I will add more and more to that. And you can see my styrofoam cups. Those are helping to keep it stable. Um, they're, they're pretty fragile, actually, um, even though they look like they're stiff. They're pretty fragile. So um, here's some pictures of the largest one I've ever made here that you can look at. Um, and I think a lot of people um, tell me they look like someone took a big blanket and shook it, and then it froze. Um, other people have told me it reminds them of underwater creatures. Uh, octopuses and, and um, coral reefs and it kind of looks like waves as they move um, but I, I would love to hear what you all think it looks like um, and to hear your creative ideas. I also encourage you to go outside and collect different um, items, sticks and stones and acorn caps and pine cones and you can start making sculptures with them outside um, and, and maybe you can play with some glue as well. And, and bring them inside. Um, I've also had different kids collect all of their cars and make beautiful circles with their cars. You can make um, sculptures uh, with anything you want. Um, so I hope you're inspired to try some new things with um, natural materials and I hope you like my acorn cap sculptures. Wasn't that cool to see and hear from a real artist and see the process and hear how she came up with it and then see her finished products right from her. Um, I just think that's always really cool when you get to hear the actual artists who made something talk about their work and what was going on in their brain that they came up with it. So uh, Miss Carissa, she asked us one to do one thing for her and then she encouraged us to do another. So one thing she asked us to do was after we see her acorn cap sculptures is to think about what they remind us of. And so 
a few of the things I think of when I look at her sculptures are um, water waves. They, I think they kind of look like big ocean waves or sea waves rolling over. And um, I, for something you could use it for, I actually think it almost looks like a bowl if you would turn them upside down. She put one on her head. I thought that was pretty funny, but I thought they would be a nice bowl. And so I and she would like to hear what her sculptures remind you guys of. So you can either tell me in Zoom or have moms and dads email or text, or you can comment ha or have mom, mom and dad type a comment um, at the bottom of the video of what you think that her sculptures look like or remind you of. The other thing she did was she encouraged us and all of us, and I'm gonna do this too later in the week for Earth Day, is to go out and make our own Earth Day art with natural things that we find. And so you can figure out if you wanna make a sculpture like she did, or maybe you wanna make a picture where you place or glue things on a piece of paper to make a picture, and you can choose to use glue to glue it together or glue it on something, or maybe you just wanna place it somewhere if you wanna place it outside or just place it on a table for a little bit. And you can choose what you wanna use. If you, I don't know that we can find acorn caps right now cause we're not really, that's more what you find in the fall, but we can see um, rocks and probably lots of flower petals that have fallen off the trees and whatever else you might find for sure. I'm sure sticks cause it's been really windy but I'd like you to try to find things that are already on the ground. So things that have fallen um, and not picking things off the tree that haven't come down yet, but trying to find things just on the ground. So look around when you're taking your family walks or playing in your yard, or some of you go on hikes to lots of fun and cool places. Just see what you find and what's interesting to you, gather it up. And then when you get home, uh, see what kind of art project you can make with it. And then we'll share them with each other through pictures or on Zoom if you can. Um, and then we'll also, I'll share them with Miss Carissa so she can see what her work inspired you guys to do. Bye, Busy Bees.